Uh, it's got two more minutes. Okay, uh, here we go. And today is our great pleasure to have a Hossein speaking here with us from University of Alberta. So Hossein was a, is a talent in mathematics since his high school, as he earned his high degree, degree, high school diploma in mathematics at the National Organization for Development of Exceptional Talents. In, uh, actually in China, we have similar programs to attract, uh, to select and train uh, very early young talents in mathematics, physics, and the chemistry. And then Hossein went to Berjan, Univer University of Berjan, and later on uh, did his master's degree at the University of Tehran, the best university in Iran. And after that, he has been working for several years as a geological engineer at the Digital Rock Physics Director at the University of Tehran before he studied his uh, 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 PhD program at University of Alberta in January this year. Actually, you're lucky if you are three months <laughs> later, then probably you are still in Iran. Uh, uh, and so today, um, uh, Hossein is going to share with us his understanding of machine learning. And then uh, at the end of this talk, he's going to share with us all of the research examples that has been conducted. So with that, we will give the rest of time for Hossein. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, hello everyone, thank you all for joining us uh, for the presentation entitled a detailed workflow for reservoir engineering studies in machine learning point of view and uh, a case study of an international contest. We will go through it in the uh, second part of the presentation. Uh, let me introduce myself to you. I'm uh, Hossein Izadi, the first year PhD student in petroleum engineering at the University of Alberta. Uh, I was just one pattern, published more than 11 journal and 15 conference papers in the application of machine learning and machine vision in uh, geosciences and petroleum engineering. And I've also developed six intelligent research based software for the industry. Okay, let's get started. Uh, the, here is the outline of the presentation. I will talk about some facts and important things about the machine learning and how you can use the machine learning in your uh, project in geosciences. And after that, uh, I will talk about machine learning in geosciences and its contributions and its workflow that you can uh, follow for your projects. Um, a case study that I have recently participated in an international contest uh, for shear wave and uh, compressional wave velocity predictions 
will be presented. And the final part is uh, the conclusion part, and some conclusions will be stated. Okay. Uh, artificial intelligence is what makes the hardware smart, okay? Uh, I mean, uh, artificial intelligence is something that can uh, make can, that can make a workflow intelligent. Okay, so um, if you are talking about some intelligence systems, or you are talking about using machine learning in an uh, uh, in a project, you are talking about an intelligent workflow. Okay, so it's not something about you know only prediction or estimation. You know you are supposed to in, uh, develop an intelligent workflow, and so it means the real um, artificial intelligence. The two important categories that we, you know, uh, geologists or uh, engineers that are related to geology, engineering is like petroleum engineering, mining engineering, civil engineering. Um, mainly we uh, use do, uh, these, these two uh, categories of artificial intelligence entitled machine learning and machine vision, okay? Uh, machine learning is somehow the computational part of artificial intelligence. It doesn't mean that machine vision is not something computational, but, but machine learning is somehow the computational part. You can find some uh, soft computing algorithms like artificial neural networks or fuzzy logic or evolutionary algorithm in this category. And you can do some predictions, classifications, estimations, uh, optimization and um, inversion that you geophysics guys are uh, very familiar with. And in machine vision, we are talking about converting pixel-based information to vector-based information. And it's a very challenging problem, you know. Just suppose that you want to uh, make the computer able to uh, interpret the images like your eye, and it's a very challenging problem. Some, uh, you know, common uh, tools in machine vision are image processing and image analysis, and I will go through the detail of these, uh, you know, tools in the uh, few slides. Uh, let me talk about the differences we have in the definition of uh, intelligent system and an automatic system. An intelligent system is something that, uh, you know, just imagine this robot, okay? This robot is programmed to put these shafts in the, in the already uh, defined places in the plate, in the floor, and just imagine that if we rotate the plate, for example, 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise, if the robot can adjust itself for finding the new positions of uh, the plate and can put these shafts in the new positions, it means an intelligent system. It means that robot can adjust itself to the new situation. It can be trained, okay? An automatic system is, an, is a system that cannot adjust itself. So if the robot cannot find and recognize the new position of the plate and uh, use the previous and already defined places for putting these shafts, it means an automatic system. So this is the differences between an intelligent and uh, an automatic system. I saw many misunderstandings in the papers that uh, many journals uh, sent to me for a peer review and uh, I saw many misunderstandings about this terminology. Uh, let's talk about it, why machine learning is important in geosciences. You know, uh, we have different types of data, including well lives, RCAL and SCAL uh, results provided by the lab. We have X-ray computer tomography images in different scales. We have scene section images. We have geological facts like false active tectonic area. We have, uh, you know, geomechanical properties, geomechanical rock typing, seismic data, UGC maps, graphic well logs for uh, different wells. We have production history data. You know, we have all these data that are different in their nature, in their dimension, in their unit. Uh, how we can use all of these data? in a single model, in a project. Just imagine that we are working on field development project. We have many sort of these data and most of these, da these data are big data, okay? So just imagine that how we can deal with uh, a problem that we want to use all of these data in our modeling. 
Machine learning is a technology, okay? Machine learning is a technology that can help us to deal with, deal with all these questions for uh, involving all these input data to the uh, project for, you know, interpreting a big data databases. And it's, it's very important that we know that how machine learning can help us in what type of problem machine learning can help us. You know, machine learning is, some, is not something that you can use for correlation, you know. Never you are not going to work on Uber with a Bugatti, for example, or with an, expen with an, with an, with an ex expensive car. You can do the correlation with some basic algorithm. You have to be aware that using machine learning needs some complex problems, okay. So this is the contribution that machine learning can provide for us for dealing all of these data and uh, for uh, you know, solving the problem. And real project in the industry, there is many differences between academic problems and industrial problems. In the industry, you have to you know, report real and reliable results. And the uh, client will check your results with uh, their own uh, you know, uh, results. And it's very important that you know that there is many differences between academic side of, uh, you know, product and industrial side. So you have to be informed that how machine learning can help you in your project. Uh, there is a hierarchy for using machine learning in all projects, in geosciences actually. Uh, it contains some pre-processing algorithms and pre-processing step. And after that, uh, for example, here you can see vector-based data pre-processing. It means, you know, something like uh, well lagging or uh, the, the results that provided by the lab for SCAL or RCAL, RCAL experiments. It means vector-based information. Pixel-based information is something like thin section images, micro tomography images, or signals that we can, uh, that we gather in the field from some uh, seismic, you know, seismic field uh, operations. Pixel-based information is something that we can we deal with some uh, signals, okay? So pre-processing step is very important. And after that, we have to select some feature. We have to do some feature extraction to extract some features for using in the next step of our modeling. And after that, we have to cluster our database. And after that, uh, for involving the distance, it's very tricky, okay? Involving the distance is something that geostatistics can do for us in our project, but involving the distance in uh, machine learning application is very tricky. And I will talk about, uh, talk about it a bit in the uh, few slides, but you have to be informed that involving the distance in geological uh, problems is very important because we have some spatial variables and they are changing with respect to the distance. And uh, we have to, uh, you know, already involve this uh, uh, property to our modeling. And the next step is decision based on the number of data. You know, this decision, uh, what training model you want to use based on the number of the data. If you are, if your database contains, for example, 300 sampling, based on the complexity of your problem, somehow it's, it's low number, okay, for training an uh, artificial neural network. And so you have to switch to other alternative uh, ways for uh, developing a model. After uh, the decision based on the number of data, you have to design the model. After that, train the model and debug it. And the final step is uh, model evaluation based on some geological facts, based on your knowledge about the problem. I will talk about all of these uh, steps in the, new, in the, uh, in the uh, next slides. Okay. Vector-based data pre-processing. You know, uh, in the statistics, we, uh, we call some outlier data to uh, those data that are plus or minus three standard deviations, okay? Uh, but do you think that in geosciences, it, it, this definition is valid? I don't think so, because you can see here an example of uh, gamma ray responses in a well lagging, and you can see some peaks, uh, uh, in the uh, uh, responses after uh, gamma ray, these peaks uh, actually mean something, okay? We cannot remove that. If we rely on a statistical definition of uh, 
the outlier data, we may remove all these peaks. But if we rely on geological science, on our background geology of the problem, we, uh, we know that these peaks mean something. And so, so we, uh, we should keep, it, keep these peaks and intervals in our database. And uh, removing these intervals are not strongly recommended. Uh, another thing in the uh, vector-based data preprocessing is about completing the missing values interval, okay? In the right image, you can see that we have missing value. Just missing value is those uh, values that uh, in some geological software, we have a value for these intervals equal to uh, minus 999, nine, nine. okay? These intervals are missing values interval. Uh, in the right image, you can see that uh, for uh, for compressional uh, wave velocity, uh, you know, lagging, we have a missing value interval. And just imagine that if we remove these these intervals that we have missing value, we will remove the corresponding uh, gamma ray nearby these uh, missing value interval. So if we, if we if we don't complete our database, we will miss one of the uh, peaks in our gamma ray lag. And it means uh, losing some useful information, you know. And uh, just you have to be informed that completing missing value interval is very important. It's very tricky, you know. I will talk about it in the next few slides, but uh, you, have to, you have to complete your database in the pre-processing step. So the pre-processing pre step contains of uh, uh, completing the missing values and also uh, removing and uh, you know removing some data, some out there data based on our geological uh, knowledge of the problem. Pixel based pixel based data preprocessing. Okay, so image processing means something that can improve the visualization of the image. Okay, you can see here in the left side of in the left image, it is the the original image, and the right image is uh, the processed image. You can see that the border and the Edges in the image are uh, more uh, are sharper than the left image, but as you can see, the value of pixels are changed during the image processing. You know, uh, the original values for RGB uh, are 104, 83, and uh, 52 respectively, but it, uh, these values are changed after the processing, and you have to keep it in your mind that if you want, ex you want to extract these uh, pixel values for some further and the next steps, you have to extract the values that correspond to the original image. And it's very important. I saw many misunderstandings in uh, some papers that uh, many outstanding journals in Azabia sent to me for a peer review. Image analysis means you want to extract some information from the images. You, know, you are not talking only about the processing. Uh, in engineering and in geosciences, we are looking for image analysis. You know, image processing is for some per some medical purposes that the doctor can see the you know image in uh, uh, that is improved in the in a visual side. But we have to extract information from the images. And so, uh, for example, here you can see that we uh, segmented the minerals species in the scene section images. The left image is plain polarized, polarized light, and the right image is cross-polarized light. And you can see that we uh, segmented the uh, mineral uh, inside the uh, scene section, and you can see the, uh, the details for uh, our algorithm in the paper that I just uh, noted in uh, the presentation. And this is our software that we developed in, uh, in my um, 2017 paper paper that submitted to the Computer and Geosciences Journal. Uh, this means image analysis. Okay, we want to extract something from the images. I mean, we converted pixel-based information to vector-based information. Okay, it means image image analysis that is uh, somehow machine vision. Okay, feature extraction always rely on your geological knowledge. Okay, for feature extraction. You can use some deep learning algorithms for feature extraction of your database, but you have to rely on your geosciences and your geological knowledge. You can also use some sensitive analysis algorithm, but 
everything, everything in modeling, in you, you know, developing intelligence system, in everything, must be double checked and validated by your geological knowledge. Okay. For example, here you can uh, see a cross plot for gamma ray versus the shear wave velocity. As you can see, there is no a logical relationship between gamma ray and shear wave velocity, but Gamma ray corresponds to shale contents in the formation, and shale contents may have some intergranular water. Okay, and so shear wave velocity is sensitive to fluid. Okay, so we can, based on our geological and reservoir engineering knowledge, we can rely on this point that so because BS shear wave velocity is sensitive to fluid, and gamma ray can, you know represent something about the fluid in the reservoir so they are related together so we can use gamma ray for something like you know some purposes for predicting vs or everything like that i'm just talking about feature selection you must be relied on your geological knowledge and after that you can use some uh, sensitive analysis to measure the impact of each of your data on the uh, you know, uh, on, on your output. It's, it's, there is many algorithms for sensitive analysis. You can Google it and uh, I, can, I don't want to emphasize on it more than this. Uh, clustering. Clustering is one of the most important uh, part in geological purposes, you know, because your sample may be collected from different locations. You may have uh, many heterogeneity in your, you know, for example, reservoir, you know, ge geochemical anomalies are located uh, in diff different areas, you know, based on, for example, the sedimentology in the area, we have different sedimentology maybe. And so the data that are gathered in different locations, okay, must uh, cluster to, uh, must be clustered because if, if, we, if we develop a model for all of them, our model may be failed, you know, because uh, these databases, uh, each of them are responding uh, differently, you know, are responding differently based on their nature and the location that we gather them. And so clustering always uh, is recommended in uh, geological projects when you are using machine learning or even other modeling uh, tools. Okay, involving the distance. The first recommendation is that you use geostatistics for uh, involving the distance, but it's something, ex you know, it's based on your experience, okay? How many works you, you did in uh, the real problems, how many, you know, uh, fields you uh, modeled use, using the machine learning. It's based on your experience. But for example, some phenomena should be taken into account for your modeling. For example, if you have a fault, you have to be aware that between these two wells, for example, here in well A and well B, well B, we have a fault between them. And if we want to uh, use some features in the well A and predict some features in the well B, we have to uh, be informed that we have a fault here and fault can change everything, okay? Somehow you have to, you know, uh, develop a model, okay, between these two, wells for defining the heterogeneity okay it's very tricky i uh, if if we have uh, uh, you know extra time i will talk about it more but uh, just keep it in your mind that you have to involve uh, the distance uh, in your modeling and uh, the next step is decision based on the number of data this, this, this you know selecting your modeling tool if you have, you know, if your database uh, contains, for example, 1,000 1, sample and you can use machine le uh, artificial neural network for your modeling, and I'm sure that uh, you guys uh, are completely aware about the, what, the, what the artificial intelligence, uh, artificial neural network is. And another thing is that you can define a base correlation and after that you can optimize uh, the coefficients. If you have a low sampling, okay, for example, 200 samples are not enough for training a, a neural network, you can define uh, a base a correlation and use some evolutionary algorithms like genetic algorithms or PSO or everything you want. 
for optimizing these coefficients. Okay, for example, this, this equation, uh, I developed this equation for uh, permeability estimation in one of the uh, fields here in Alberta. Uh, K corresponds to permeability and D values are, uh, you know, some parameters that defines the uh, grain size, okay, the grain size that we gather in the field. And A, B, and C are the coefficients that we optimize uh, to close the permeability that's reported by this model with the permeability that we measured in the laboratory. This is how we train our model for permeability estimation in uh, our recent work. And after that, you have to design, design the model, separate the, always you have to separate your project to several parts, okay? And after that, you have to use appropriate tools for each step. I will talk about it uh, more in the next few slides about the clustering step or the prediction step, the preprocessing step uh, in the uh, case study of the international contest. And uh, your tool should be based on some geological facts. Uh, we will go through it in the next few slides. And always I recommend that you drive workflow for yourself to be more clear, you know, to, the problem should be more clear for you to, you can think about it. You can come up with some idea to solve the problem. And the training and evaluation, the model, you have to use some training algorithms. I'm sure that you, you guys know about the training models and evaluate the results based on your geological facts, just keep it in your mind that do not accept anything that your model gives you, okay? The most unreliable thing <laughs> in geosciences and reservoir engineering is software, okay? Software are not reliable at all. Despite you double check the results with your geological and engineering knowledge, okay? A simple example is that if your modeling predicted the process value equal to, for example, 45%, it doesn't mean that we don't have such a process value in real world. So just double check everything with your geological uh, knowledge. Let's go through, through the case study that I want to talk about. Uh, the SPW International Contest for uh, Shear Wave and Compressional Wave Velocity pre Prediction. Uh, I participated in the contest and I stood in the seventh place between 30 and two teams around the world. Uh, the contest, the, 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 the database of the contest uh, contains some uh, com conventional well logs. Um, as, you, as you know, compression uh, and shear wave velocity are among the most important parameters in seismic studies and for reservoir development. Mostly they are obtained from core analysis and, extend, and uh, some uh, DSI tools that are not available in many wells and core analysis uh, is expensive. So uh, developing an alternative way, you know, developing an, a reliable, low cost and efficient alternative way for VP and VS prediction is a great contribution for uh, reservoir management. Uh, in the contest, we had the database including caliper, neutron, gamma ray, resistivity, medium resistivity, uh, photoelectric factor, and density light. And the goal was VP and VS prediction, okay? Uh, as, I, as I discussed before, uh, generally VP and VS show some correlations with rock and fluid contents uh, through the matrix and some parameters like porosity, grain density, fluid content, and, uh, you know, because of all these, you know, these, these input well logs, including uh, the resistivity, because the resistivity can, uh, you know, measure the resistivity of a formation, and it's, it's based on the fluid content. And so it can uh, provide us some information about the fluid and the uh, shear wave velocity is, uh, for example, uh, is uh, sensitive to the fluid content of the uh, formation. And this is why we, I have used these uh, logs for our for my prediction. For example, I, I, I'm talking about the feature feature selection. Okay, based on some uh, geological knowledge and geological background, I selected my uh, input data for VP and VS uh, prediction. You can see here the workflow. I recommend you that you always develop such a workflow in your projects. 
what the input is, what the preprocessing and feature extraction are, what the clustering algorithms are, what the prediction uh, tools and uh, workflow are, and the finally, what is your output? Okay, I will talk about all these, uh, uh, you know, uh, steps in the next few slides. Uh, the input was uh, some well logged data and the minimum similarity threshold for the clustering algorithm. And I, in the preprocessing step, I remove some uh, uh, data. I complete uh, the intervals that we had uh, missing missing values. I selected uh, uh, input data for VP and VS prediction. I cluster the data and finally use some uh, neural network. Uh, models for the, uh, for my prediction and finally i uh, predicted the vp and vs pre-processing based on my reservoir engineering knowledge okay i removed those data of neutral values that was uh, that were more than uh, 0.7 okay because it doesn't mean really because uh, the highest value in neutral values uh, should be for example 0.6 and you know removing is not is not the best solution the better approach is correcting them based on some available charts or prior knowledge that um, we may have based on some neighboring wells but in the contest we didn't have such information and so the best solution was removing these intervals because if you don't remove some outlier data your modeling and your results uh, may be fail and maybe your model Maybe not reliable for uh, using uh, and uh, you know for using in the some you know inter industrial projects. Uh, but because we didn't have such information, we uh, I, I I removed uh, these values, and after that I completed the missing value intervals. The important thing is that when you want complete your database in some missing intervals, you have to make sure that. You use uh, for training, for example, a neural network for completing your database, your trained database. I'm talking about the training database. If you want to uh, train a neural network, you have to select your random, uh, your, uh, you know, you, you have to, for example, uh, use, uh, select 70% uh, of your training database for uh, training the network. And this 70%, should be distributed in all of your database, okay? You have to make sure that your, uh, this 70% is uh, distributed in all of your database. That's very important because the network should be trained with all phenomena and with all uh, you know, situations. And in this step, the RMSE for VP and VS prediction for completing my training database. I'm still in the training database, you know? I didn't predict anything in the test database. Uh, for this step, my uh, RMSE was 2.93 and 12.23, respectively, for VP and VS prediction. In the clustering, you know, the major, the major, the main part of the problem was in clustering step. Okay, clustering always is recommended in geosciences and geological problems. Uh, I talk about it, why you have to cluster uh, your database, but what algorithms you have to use for clustering your data. In geological studies, it's very difficult that we anticipate the number of clusters, okay? For example, just in a simple thin section image, how you can uh, determine that how many, how many minerals are existed in the thin section? It's somehow impossible, really. You can you can you can det determine it for a single thin section, but if you want to develop an intelligent workflow, you know, an intelligent workflow that can work with many thin section images, you cannot determine the number of um, minerals for each of thin section. For example, just imagine that you have three thousand image thin section images. You cannot determine all the uh, the number of uh, minerals for every thin section. So it's very anticipated to, it's very difficult to anticipate the number of clusters in geological studies and geological databases. So this is why 
I, I, I have developed an, an incremental clustering algorithm in my recent paper. It doesn't need for uh, determining the number of clusters to prior the uh, clustering process. In this context, I have used two different clustering algorithms. Okay. The first one is the incremental clustering algorithm. You can see here. You can, you can go through the details in my papers. I, can, I don't want to emphasize on the uh, clustering algorithm and how it and, uh, you know, describes the working process of the algorithm. Uh, the algorithm works based on some similarity that can uh, determine between the new incoming data and the already uh, created clusters. Uh, basically, I use this uh, clustering algorithm, as you can see, uh, the database for um, my database was uh, clustered to six classes, okay, to six clusters. And as you can see here, somehow the clusters are, you know, the, the uh, shear wave velocity of these classes are somehow close, close together. And in the first point, you know, in the in the in the first look, it's somehow uh, logical, okay. Uh, but after that, after the clustering, I used Elma neural network to predict the VP and VS. However, very high value of error I observe. You know, for example, the RMSE for VS prediction in some cluster uh, war, war, uh, was about 85 and it's very high value for error you know and i think that how can i figure out this problem i changed uh, my classing algorithm uh, and used another classing algorithm based on uh, the validation database that the contest provided us the validation database uh, is a part of test database okay uh, okay I use the whole train database for training an Elma neural network to predict the whole validation database. Okay, when I when I cross plot the predicted shear wave values in the validation database versus real shear wave values in the validation database, I observed a clear segmentation and clustering between uh, two 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 categories are existed in the uh, validation database. As you can see here, there is an underestimation, okay? There is an underestimation in, uh, the, in some data in the validation database. Now I, I figure out what the problem is. We have under, underestimation. For example, if you can see here, for example, a value here uh, for v, the VS value here is about 300, but our model predicted is predicted the value as 200 and it's very you know high error and uh, now i figure out what the problem is and i have to come up with some idea to solve this problem i uh, developed four solutions to uh, deal with this problem the first one okay correcting the train database because these locations the locations that we have underestimation these locations uh, okay, these locations are intervals, are intervals, intervals in which high values of gamma ray and neutron observed in these locations. Okay, so this is the impact of gamma ray on shear wave velocity and compressional wave velocity. Okay, in these intervals, we have a peak in gamma ray. So the first solution is creating these uh, values because we didn't have any prior information about the, uh, you know, the field and the, about the uh, problem. We can we couldn't uh, correct these values. The second solution is removing these intervals. Okay, removing these intervals and let the network to train with other data in the database to prone the network to be biased to these points. It's not recommended because uh, if you if you remove some data in your database, you you are uh, you know your network cannot be trained as well as uh, 
you want because you are removing something and so your your network cannot be trained well it's not recommended i didn't use this uh, solution the third solution that is somehow you know uh in real world actually in real world you don't have such a validation database okay but in real world you have many information about the geological uh situation in the field for example you have many geological reports you have nearby wells you have many information in the nearby wells and because in the contest we we didn't have such information uh, this validation database shared to us so the, the third solution is that changing vs and vp values in these points what points the points that we have underestimation on it changing the vs and vp values of these points with those points that correspond with similar vs and vp but different input values in the training data you know it's some somehow it's like a cheating you know because we are changing the values we are changing the values to help the network to be trained well if we if we do uh, this uh, you know section if you if you if we do uh, this solution based on some geological reports it's okay but if we do this based on the validation database that uh, shared to us it's somehow like cheating you know it's not it's it's not uh, recommended because uh, it's not based on your knowledge you know i didn't use that and the fourth the fourth solution is trying to train the network better actually i it's like the fourth the fourth solution um, in the prediction step i use neural net art elma neural network for uh, with the learning macro training algorithm the database included about uh, 30000 data points and not uh, this is the point that i'm talking about trying to train the network better you cannot find such a thing in all uh, machine learning books is something is somehow uh, about my experiences if you use if you use a nonlinear combination of your input data okay for example you have uh, we have a new ne neutron and gamma ray in, in in my input data if you use a nonlinear combination of some of your input data and put it as the output okay in addition to for example vp or vs put it as the output for your prediction it helps your network to be trained well it help it helps your network to uh, undercover the hidden relationship between the input values and output values and really it works you know it works and uh, using this uh, uh, strategy uh, my result for uh, vp and vs prediction my rmse was improved to 15.38 and it was before using this strategy it was about 20 okay and i improved my results significantly using only this strategy and um, i actually to be honest i uh, you know tested this the third solution here just to talk about it and if i use the, the, the third solution my rmse uh would be about 12 and maybe it's very interesting to you that the first team the first ranked team rmse for uh, the first ranked team in the contest was about 12.5 and if i uh, use the third solution i would stood in the uh in the first place but now i i stood in the uh, first, uh, seventh place with the rmse of 15.38 and you can see here the structure of the network that i developed for a vp and vs prediction you can see here the input data and i use nonlinear combination it's very important i i strongly recommend you guys for using this strategy for training your network in your own project and you can see here my results for vp and vs prediction in the test database uh, okay let's go to the conclusion conclusion maybe are the most important part of my presentation okay uh machine learning and machine vision are assistive technologies 
okay they are not something magical you cannot do a magic with artificial intelligence they are assistive technologies under the human express supervision just keep it in your mind that you can use all these algorithms for solving a problem under your supervision okay one of the most important points in the application of machine learning in geosciences and petroleum engineering is about using appropriate tools for different parts of the problem in the pre-processing -pre part you uh, you, have, you have to use you know some appropriate tools and strategies in clusterings is the same in the prediction part is the same in every part you have to be familiar with all algorithms that develop in the machine learning community and you have to choose the best uh, the best tools for different parts of your problem interpreting the input data based on geological or engineering point of view not machine learning or a statistics point of view as you uh, saw in my uh, presentation if we rely on some statistical definitions for uh, removing uh, outlier data, we will miss some important inform information in our database. And so just rely on your geological uh, background and knowledge for data pre-processing. Uh, we have to be familiar with the background, okay, with the background, mathematics and philosophy of machine learning algorithms. And we have to modify them to be used in geosciences database and signals okay to the best of my knowledge and through all my all of my industrial experiences for example 90 percent of the algorithms that develop in machine learning community cannot be used in geosciences because we are working in very uncertain environment okay we are working in subsurface we, we cannot see our results okay and so you have to modify all the algorithms. You can, you can see the modifications that I have made in all of my papers. Almost in all of my papers, I, I modified the algorithms that developed, that developed in the machine learning community. And you have to do that in your real problems. Uh, I recommend you guys that look at the problem. Always look at the problem. Think about the problem and segment the problem to several phases and start to design a workflow to solve it you know it's it it uh, helps you significantly for dealing with the problem when the intelligence system will be developed in many cases in it need to be redesigned and retrained you saw it in the clustering uh, part of the contest i changed my strategy despite that the incremental clustering that i used is one of the best clustering algorithms in geosciences but it didn't work and after that i have to change my mind and my strategy to attack the problem and solve the problem so you have to redesign your workflow debug your uh, algorithm to reach the minimum threshold uh, for the accuracy of your problem uh these the the, the these uh two uh, conclusions the last two conclusions are most important points in the presentation i didn't talk anything about coding i didn't talk anything about using commercial software okay machine learning and machine vision is not about coding every undergrad computer engineer computer engineering uh, in undergrad a student in computer engineering department can code everything you want in different platforms of course it's better that you can develop your own code, but machine learning is not about coding. Coding is a mi minor part, okay? The machine learning and machine vision is about philosophy, okay? It's about the art of thinking, the ability of looking at the data, how you can look at the data, at, at the data. You know, when you plot a data, you, you look at it, you have to uh, find something when you are looking at the data it is the art of looking at the data you have to uh, be experienced to uh, reach your ability for uh, you know extract some real-time information when you are looking at the data machine learning is about train training a computer to think and act like a human expert or even beyond that 
deep learning is something that can uh, you know extract some features that you cannot understand with your own uh, knowledge or you know your own background and it's very tricky and i uh, there is no time for talking about it in this uh, presentation but just keep it in your mind that machine learning is not using some commercial software for training a neural network to predicting, predicting something okay machine learning is about making a whole workflow intelligent okay and it's about the philosophy the ability of thinking and this is the, this this point is the most important thing, thing that i wanted to uh, let you know guys and in the end of my presentation i would like to finish my presentation with the memory of my dear friends and talented students here at the University of Alberta, Amir Hossein Saidiniya and Nassim Rahmanifar, uh, we missed them in a tragedy. We lost them in a tragedy, unfortunately, and uh, really we missed them. And uh, help and uh, rest in peace, guys. And thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, guys. Okay, thank you very much, Hossein. And, uh... Yeah, but uh, other groups will have other meetings at 10, so we're going to have several short questions. I think it's a very educational uh, lecture for us to know about it. Actually, it's way much better than uh, if you talk about the VSVP uh, details and uh, mm -hmm. uh, how yeah. to construct those, because I think the general philosophy is also widely applied in what we are working on right now uh, in the chemistry of the Earth. Okay, now it's time for questions for the audience, so feel free to ask questions or raise your hand. Or type. Uh, hi, Jose. Uh, I'm hey. uh, I'm Simon from Zhejiang University, and I really like you. Uh, you last part the about the thinking about the uh, the yeah the machine learning, and uh, I have some uh, detailed questions about. Uh, about your uh, 28,000 uh, data, mm -hmm. am I right? Uh, so, yeah, yeah so, so I mean, uh, and I, I, want, I wonder how, uh, how much data, uh, I, mean, I mean, are the, all, all the data have, uh, having a, a true value about your, like, VS? Yes, yes. Oh, uh, so 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 all the all of the twenty eight thousand data have a true value, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I'm wondering, what do you mean about what do you mean about true values? True values, because because you want to practice, right? Practice. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So 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 you have to compare your prediction to the true value. Oh yeah, uh, you know that was our training database. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, have yeah. a test database including about uh, fifty thousand data points. Yeah. Uh, I, it, okay. Yeah. We have another. We had another database for testing. Ah, okay. So, yeah. so, so that is the twenty-eight thousand data is the training training yes. assemble, yes. right? Yes. Yes. Uh, so okay. Uh, but, but how much the uh, uh, data in the uh, test assemble? Sorry. Uh, I mean, uh, how much data in your test assemble? Okay, it, it was about fifteen thousand data. The test database. Okay. Uh, so, so the test data you don't have a true value, or you. Also have no, one. we didn't. We didn't have a true value. The the contest, uh, uh, you know, the contest guys, they had the true value, and we sent them uh, our results, and they compare our results to their database, and okay. we, and they let let us know about the RMSE that we have. Okay. As, uh, and another question is, uh, uh, I I don't really know the your R S R S uh, the the index to judge your result. I, I mean, I want to know the prediction accuracy is is, is what. Uh, yeah, you know, RMSE is a uh, is a factor for determining that how much you are accurate. Okay. Yeah. 
if if you are close if as much as you are close to zero you are more accurate okay and uh, for example if if your rmse yeah uh, is about 10 it's better than your rmse uh, will be you know 15 you know yeah uh, it's not percent rmse is not percent but it's it's uh, you know uh, it's uh, about your accuracy how how much your accuracy uh, how much you can predict your uh, pre predict the values as close as possible to the real values you know yeah. you can find you can find some definitions about the rmse but it's it's unit is not percent okay you can yeah, yeah. find some details in the yeah in the literature about the rmse uh, so, so, yeah okay uh, uh but I, I still ha have not the con conception of the RSME. But uh, but could you tell me something about the prediction oh, yeah, sure. accuracy? Sure. Or, yeah. Right. Uh, RMSE, you know, you uh, subtract the predicted values, okay, with uh, the real values, and you uh, power them to two, okay, and after that. You squared your result and divided all of them to the number of your sample, and it provides you uh, the value that how many, how much you are close to the uh, real values. You know, okay. yeah. Uh, all right, it's all right. root mean s square RMSE root mean s square error. Okay, okay, okay. So, so your result is 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 good, like uh, uh, fifteen. Yeah. Or RMSE, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, when RMSE is, is less than 20, yeah. you can, it's, it's reliable by the definition, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, okay. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, more questions? We do have another one or two short questions before we wrap it up. Uh, hello, Hussein. Hey. Yeah, I'm a Nanji Kang from China University of Geosciences. Uh, I have a short question. Uh, and do your database have the non num non non number non value? Sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, I mean. Okay, okay, okay. I have help with this uh question in asking. So Lanji Khan was yeah, asking. Your voice is better, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so whether there is an a n value that is a, a value that is empty, other than a real value in the database, right? I think that's Lanji Khan's question. The missing value, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. that's the missing value. Basically, that's okay. put an a n in some cases. Okay, and uh, what's the question about the missing value? So would, please repeat, would you please repeat your question? You are you are asking something about the missing values, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Would you please repeat your question? Uh, my question is uh, how 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 you deal with your missing values? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know we had some intervals uh, in our shear wave velocity and compression wave velocity. Uh, that we have, we had no measurements in uh, these intervals. I used uh, my training database, you know, in the training database, I have used uh, other intervals that we had uh, real values for VS and VP. And uh, using those intervals, I trained a network, a neural network, for predicting the VS and VP values in uh, the missing values intervals. Okay, I have, I have used uh, neural network for predicting and for completing my training database. Is that something that you are asking for? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. And uh, I have another question about the uh, in, in, in our data, we, we use the we, we use the network, we have uh, more clusters and uh, yeah, we have some more clusters than the than we thought uh, that, uh, and uh, 
I hear from your presentation, to though you have some some other clusters and how and I don't understand how to reduce those more clusters. Uh, okay, in the first part, first uh, clustering algorithm, right, or in the second uh, clustering, because I have used the two different concepts for the clustering. Uh, I can share the presentation again if you want. Yes, thank you. Oh yeah. So uh, you are. I think that you are fine talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me share it again. Okay. Here, oh, it's hidden. Okay, so I think that you are talking about this part, right? Yeah, 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 yes. Okay, you know, uh, I clustered my database and you can see here the result of the clustering, but it, it didn't work, okay. When I use neural network to predict VP and VS based on this clustering, okay, I trained the separate neural networks for uh, each cluster. And when I trained the network, I saw that uh, my, uh, I have very high error in my prediction. And this is why I switched to another classing algorithm that you can see here, the validation based on the validation database. And if you are asking about uh, how can I use these uh, clusters to predict the VS, I didn't use these clustering because it doesn't, it didn't work well. And it has, it has many, you know, high values for error. And so I ignored it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, always. No okay, I will thank Hossein again. So, so just one thing for clarification. So one audience is asking that, did you say 15K or did you say 50K? 1.5 or 5.0K? 15, 1.5, 15. 1.5, okay, 1.5. Yeah, one five. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay, great. Okay, thank you very much, Hossein. Um, thank you, guys. For giving us a lecture. And we do hope that we will see you in Hangzhou in the future after, after that. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Thank you. Okay, great. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.